Welcome to this session on SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. My name is Ingo Hegeford and I will be your host for this session. This time we will take a look at how we can create a view in SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. A view basically gives you the option to join either local or remote tables or existing views. So you can basically combine those existing elements into a view. Now, as part of the view, you can either rename or remove columns, you can hide them, you can add calculations, and you can also add filters. And then you basically deploy the view to your SAP Data Warehouse Cloud system, and you have the ability to decide if you want this view to be consumable with SAP Analytics Cloud. As part of the overall view, you're also defining the join type between the different elements. So let's assume we have two tables and you then can decide which join type you would like to use. So here's the list of different join types that SAP Data Warehouse Cloud actually supports at this point. So you have the option to use an inner join, a left join, the right join, the full join, and the cross join and the natural join. So the first few items like an inner, left, right, and full is probably well known. So let's clarify the cross and the natural join. The cross join is basically creating a kind of like a Cartesian product. So it will actually create every possible combination of the data. The natural join will actually be based on column that you have in both tables. So it will create an implicit join based on those common columns. So let's now take a look at how we can actually create the view. So here we are in SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And as a first step, we're going to go into the data builder. So we're going to choose the space that we created last time. We can see all the tables and the entity relationship model we created previously. And we're going to go ahead and actually create our first view. On the left hand side, we can see the tables as part of the repository. So we can drag and drop the sales order headers into our view. So what you can see now is that you also get basically an output projection. And then we can bring in the second table, simply drag and drop on top of the first table we used, and we can then join. So we get always two elements. We have the join properties as shown here, where we can design on the join type, as well as which fields are being joined. We also have the option to add filters, calculated columns, and we can preview the data. And then we have the projection output from this process where we join these two tables. Here we can decide if we want to exclude certain columns from the projection. We could even if we want to change actually the technical names. You can also see when you click on the elements, it highlights from where the column is coming. And then we have the final output. So we're quickly going to rename it in our case to the sales view and we want it as an analytical data set that can be consumed with analytics cloud so now we can also add columns to the measures so we're quickly going to do that we adding the discount the order quantity and the unit price to the measures because these are actually non-editive items we're just going to configure the aggregation and set it to none. And we will deal with that later on as part of SAP Analytics Cloud, where we then start creating the average numbers. So now we have those two tables, we can actually then start adding the additional items. So we can bring in the table customer. In this case, we joined it on top of the actual projection from the first two. We can then bring in table city and join it with the table customer. As we can see here, it's done based on the city ID. 
And then we can also bring in the table for the salesperson. So we join the salesperson with the customer and we ensure the join is done on the salesperson ID. And then we can also add all the product details. So we're going to add the product table to the projection from our sales. And then we can start adding the product subcategory to the table for product and the product category on top of the subcategory. So now we have all the tables that we prepared previously and we have all, so to speak, lined them up. We joined them and we have basically one sales view output. We have not created any kind of filters. We've not created any calculations at this point. We have not kind of like hidden or changed any of the columns. So the only thing that we quickly going to do is from the product details, we're also adding the measures into the overall output. And we're also going to set them to an aggregation of none. Because, for example, the product list price and the product cost are elements that are coming in from a product level detail. So we can't just sum them up, for example, to a customer level. We actually have to make sure that, for example, the product cost or the product list price are being used from a product level detail. So these are actually for example, product cost per product. So we have to consider the order quantity as well. And then we can actually aggregate it. But we shouldn't just aggregate the product cost as is. So now we're going to save the view and then we can deploy it. And then we could actually consume the view in SAP Analytics Cloud. So we do have the sales view deployed and we could, if we wanted, go into SAP Analytics Cloud and basically now create analytics on top of this view. But remember, we also created a hierarchy for the salesperson. So we have to actually create a second view on top of our view that we just created. So we're just going to take the sales view and put it onto the canvas. We do get another output view, in this case, view one. And what we have to do is we have to create an association to the table from the salesperson. And that then will ensure that the hierarchy that we created for this table, which represents the dimension, is also then becoming available in SAP Analytics Cloud. So we just did that. So we can finalize the steps. We give this view a name as well, and we configure it for the consumption in SAP Analytics Cloud. we we'll deploy it, and then we could use the second view as well in SAP Analytics Cloud, and we should then see the hierarchy being visible in SAP Analytics Cloud. I hope these steps were helpful and I want to say thank you for watching and listening.